Walking out of a university building to head across campus is not unusual. And even being beat by a Palm Pilot isn't all that uncommon. But this Palm Pilot is not reminding the young woman about an upcoming appointment. Instead, it's asking her to rate her current emotional state. Does she feel isolated or stressed? And that is unusual. It's all part of a series of studies at Pittsburgh's Carnegie Mellon University, studies that are exploring the link between mind and body. Some of the studies look at emotions, like loneliness, to see how emotions relate to a specific measure of health. I'm going to give you a vaccination now. Such as our ability to develop antibodies after a flu shot. Other studies look at sociability, to see how that relates to one's ability to ward off colds. Welcome uh, for our uh, cold study. Uh, you will be our guest for the next uh, six days. Guest uh, first, may be uh, a bit of an exaggeration, because as shown in this demonstration, the purpose of the study is to make the guests sick. Keep your head back for a, a minute. A cold virus is placed into the nose, and the volunteers are sequestered at a local motel for I six days, your middle ear pressure. Okay. where they're tested daily to see just how sick they get. All of these studies have been designed by physicians like Junate Alper of the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Alper teams up with psychologist Sheldon Cohen of Carnegie Mellon University. Cohen is a leading researcher in the field of health psychology. Years ago, he determined that as stress increases, so does the risk of getting a cold. People who were in the highest 25% on the stress measures were uh, over two times more likely to get sick than people who are in the lowest 25 percent. But now he's studying more specific emotions and behaviors like loneliness and sociability, as well as biological pathways that might explain the link between psychological factors and the immune system. Prior to each study, students provide psychological information. Here, in the study on loneliness and isolation, they place the initials of friends in concentric circles, the closer to the center, the closer the friendship. Some have many friends, others have very few. Then, for two weeks, they carry the Palm Pilots. They respond to questions four times per day. And after each set of responses, a cotton roll is placed in the mouth and chewed on. That allows a stress hormone, cortisol, which is present in saliva, to be measured at specific times of the day. The daily cycle of cortisol production, as well as its quantity, may be related to psychological factors and immune functioning. Four days into the experiment, there's that flu shot. And to measure antibody levels, blood draws are performed, here's the pinch. both before the study and at one and four months yeah, after the flu shot. What's the outcome? And you can see that those who are lowest in loneliness are producing the most antibody and those who are highest in loneliness are producing the least antibody, and this occurs both at one and four months. Prior to the study on colds, volunteers received phone calls. Did you have a meal or a beverage with anyone during the last 24 hours? Such information provides a measure of social activity. Then, each day during the study... Here comes the nasal wash. You'll have to say KKK. You'd probably rather forget K -K -K this experience. K -K 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 but the nasal wash measures the amount of virus present in the nose, and it also measures a protein Thank called you. cytokine. In highly stressed people, cytokine levels can become dysregulated and abnormally elevated. Such cytokine involvement is one biological pathway connecting stress to illness. You can explain about 75% of the illness by the release of cytokines. And there's a relationship between sociability and cold development. People with the lowest level of sociability are most likely to get a cold, while people with the highest level of sociability are least likely to develop a cold. The study also demonstrates that people who are happy and enthusiastic develop fewer colds. So if people develop colds when stressed or lonely, can we help to reduce the risk of colds by reducing these psychological factors? Not in short-term studies such as these because the stress that's linked to such illnesses is related to longer-term interpersonal or work-related problems. We're not going to bring people in for a couple days and change the fact that they're unemployed or that they have a, a, a long-term uh, conflictual relationship with their spouse. Or... But Cohen is more optimistic that outside the research lab, in the real world, 
some social factors may be changeable. Getting people more socially engaged and seeing how that affects different health outcomes. And that is where some future research will be directed.